What's up guys, Jason here at the Players Club in Burbank, California, bringing you another Jimmy Page lesson. Today we're taking a look at Immigrant Song. We're going to do a hybrid of the studio and live version, show, so I'll show you as many of those licks as I can, uh, I can conjure up. Uh, but let's get into it. First finger, fret two of the E string, that is an F sharp note. Then you're going to take your pinky finger on the fourth fret of the D string. Now you could use your third finger and you could grip it like that. It's just so much easier to play with your pinky finger and that's what Jimmy Page does. He uh, plays with his pinky finger on this riff. So if you don't have strength in your pinky finger yet, gotta get it. And uh, there's plenty of exercises I'm sure that you could find here on YouTube or in any book or whatnot to strengthen your hands. But you do wanna have that fourth finger available to play this. So that note's also an F sharp. Now when we hit the same note twice at different spots on the fretboard, we call it an octave. So this is an F sharp octave pattern that we have going on here. Now the picking pattern, well that's, that's a little intense here, so let's take a look. We're going to go on the E string first, down, down, up. Now you want to, you don't want to be like uh, metal style player with this, meaning like very articulate and tight, you want it to have a little bit of a groove. So it has to walk that line of being tight but loose. Uh, you've heard that term, I'm sure, thrown around with um, like Rolling Stones and Zeppelin, really like tight but loose. But what that basically means is that it has a bit of a blues groove to it, but it's also articulate. So don't let this be, um, you know, metal style uh, song, because it's not, it's, it's a blues rock song. So we do that by keeping our hand in a nice flow, but shortening our, uh, I guess, attack radius, right? The amount that you're going to uh, strum with your hand. So you want it to have a little bounce, but you don't want it to be like too tight. So one and uh, now we're gonna go on beat two is gonna be the, uh, the F sharp octave, and you wanna attack that a little bit harder than the E string. And if you listen to the recording, you'll hear that that note lines up with the snare drum, and he does attack it a little bit harder to make it pop out a little bit more. So you'd have one and a two. Now you're gonna follow that by an, hitting an up strum on the E again, the E string. So put that together, one and a two. Right back to it. Now let's talk about the um, the duration of some of these notes because he does throw in some staccato style here. Hear that? So you want to hit the note, hit the first note, and then release your finger from the board but keep it on the string. So if we do that, we get a short uh, sound, short uh, note, and it really makes it pop. So when you're playing riffs like this, you want to use that style, that arpeggio style, da, 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 to make the notes come alive and jump. So you want to go, but when you hit those two notes, you leave your finger down. So the first note is staccato, then held down. Then we go to the D string, that's staccato, but with a strong attack. And then the up strum on the, um, the lower F sharp octave on the E string, also staccato. What are you talking about? Just play the riff. <laughs> so. Now, the next pass through, you're going to lift your index finger up and hit an open E. And that's going to be your pickup note. So you have one and a two E and a. Uh. You hit that open E real quick. One and a two E and a uh, three and a four E and a uh, one and a two E and a uh, three and a four E. Now, you notice I'm not like like tight with my right hand there. I'm doing that kind of loose, tight but loose feel that I was just talking about. Very important. Now, a final uh, uh, point on this, a technique tip on this, is that you want to have a three-point grip in your hand to play this effectively. What I mean by that is I'm using my thumb to push up into the guitar neck. I'm using my index finger to push down on the E string and my pinky finger to push down on the, 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 uh, the D string. So I have three points that are, I'm, I'm using with my hand when I'm playing these notes. The, the thumb is the constant, meaning I'm constantly pushing into the guitar neck, but I'm alternating between the two other points. So the index finger, I'm pressing down when I'm uh, playing that E string note, but when I go over to the D string, my arm will shift so that I can 
balance that power and get it over to this side. So you'll see me when I play, I'm doing this. I'm not holding one position. It's very, very challenging to be work, lifting your fingers on and off like that while you're playing this riff if you, if you uh, keep in one position. So just alternate, right? So check this out. You see that? So that just gets me into a position where it makes it easier on my hand. Now you may want to try that, but um, you know, you may not. <laughs> Let's just play the riff with the drums. Here we go. I'll go a little slower first for you. One, two, three, four. Okay, so take as much time as you need to get that down. Maybe you want to review that part with the drums with me. Uh, but then we move into the verse, and it's just two chords. It's A to an E. And then we reverse that, E, A. Pretty sure he's using the bar A. Any version of A will work. So you have one and a two E and a three and a four and a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right? Now on the recording, you'll hear some, uh, some tremolo sound. That's very likely from the amp that he was using. Just get a tremolo pedal and you'll be fine, or don't use it at all live, there was no tremolo. Uh, but there's also a little scratch pickup in there. You have muted strum. So that sounds like this. That is mostly done live. Um, and if you listen to any live recording of, uh, of Paige playing this, it's much funkier. Yeah, funkier in a rock song uh, than it is on the recording. And he uses a lot of that staccato style. Um, mostly because the, the tempo was played, the tempo was higher than it was on the recording. So he's trying to keep his hand grooving to keep up with the speed. So you may want to try that. All right, now we get to the final part of the song. You have the chord A power. A power chord or A5. Now I keep my thumb on the side right there covering the E string here so that I can chop at the str at the chord. Now I'm going to go to a B. That's just 2A, 4D. Again, I play with my pinky finger. You can play it with that finger too if you want. To a C. And then that awesome line. So that, uh, that little lick uh, is played live. This is not on the recording, but if you listen to How the West Was Won, you'll hear this lick. So let's break that down. You have the C, which is the third fret of the A string. Now we're gonna slide from five to seven with our ring finger. Then uh, five D, seven D, so. To uh, 5G, to 7G, then 7G again with a bend, to a pull off, 5G, 7D, and then 5G. So I'll play that slowly, take your time, review the video a few times so that you can get those notes down. Now watch my picking pattern. So you can see that as I go faster, I start to employ some alternate picking. So the reason I do that and show it both ways is so that you see if you're practicing this slow and you're going all down picks, you're really doing yourself a disservice. So try and work in those alternate picks as much as possible. So if I put that together, I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and. So on the and of four is when that riff comes in. Now there's also strums. One and a two and a three E and a four and a one and a two and a three E and a four and a one and a two and a three E and a four and. 
Okay, so let me put that all together for you a few times and then we'll try it with the drums. Now again, that's super advanced stuff right there. You could also just play A, B, C and be cool with it. But uh, if you want that challenge, you want to play just like Paige. That's what he does. So let's try that with the drum beat. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four. We'll run it back one more time. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, if you can, so if you can get that in there, it's a super cool uh, lick to play. And again, check out how the West was won, uh, the live version. That's how he does it. Now, uh, the end of the song, this is where we're really open for discussion. That last chord that, that comes in, boy, there's just so much literature and video on, well, what is that? And, and I've had discussions with uh, really great bass players who were like, you know, I don't even know what to play on that part. Um, so watching a lot of or as much as i could live video of this from the uh, page and plant era from uh whatever footage is there from from the zeppelin era from really listening to it watching uh, mr jimmy uh from jason bonham's band i believe all we're going to do is play a g minor seven so that's going to be just your second finger barring uh third fret d g and b with a slight bend up. So to do this, your thumb's gonna be around the top of the neck. You're gonna really press down hard with your middle finger and you're gonna push the note up as you up strum. So you have one and a two and a three and a, sorry, down strum. One and a two and a three and a four. So you have and a four. One and a two and a three and a four. So you have two muted strums there. Okay, and you bend, push that up, and that gives it just that little bit of tension. One and a two E and a three and a four. One and a two E and a three and a four. Okay, so let's try that with a drum beat. One, two, three, four. Now, if you want to get even deeper with this song, the live version has this super cool uh, like funk section that goes before the solo. And he's going like this. So he's holding those two octaves. This one and a two and a which is just like wild, but really cool. All right, so the only other part I wanted to show you was uh, the use of the thumb. So if you watch Jimmy Page live, the guy uses his thumb for the E string notes almost every time. And uh, this song is no exception. I, show, I told you at the outset of the video, we're gonna be doing live and uh, record versions. If you put your thumb around, even if you have the thinner neck like he does, the tone's a little different, but you don't have to change grips. So there's a give and a take uh, with it. Now, I personally think the cleaner way is with the index finger. But if I'm playing live, then I'm gonna keep my thumb around and it's gonna sound like this. <laughs> It's just a little bit more muffled, but with a live band and the energy there, it doesn't really matter. So if you watch him play, especially the Page and Plant stuff, his hand is really wide, like when, when doing this, this song. Uh, and the thumb's definitely around the top of the neck because he understands that it's more about the energy of the band at that point rather than just like the precision. So you might want to try both ways. Um, you take a song like uh, the, the Wanton song and it's the same thing. He uses that grip there. Uh, 
right? That thumb over grip. Anyway, so those are the parts for Immigrant Song, and uh, just take your time with this. It's a it's a tune that that you know it's going to take a little while to get down right, but it is really really fun to play, and it will definitely make you a better guitar player. Now, if you have a request for a Led Zeppelin song that you'd like me to do. Just leave it in the uh, the comment section. If you don't mind, give me a thumbs up and maybe a subscribe if you haven't uh, done so already. We're really trying to grow this channel, so if you don't mind sharing the video with other people that might enjoy learning some Led Zeppelin or some Keith Richards, well, we sure would appreciate it, and we hope that we can help them just the same as we hope that we can help you. Until then, you guys take real good care. We'll see you soon.